Hey guys, Coach Lou here. It is week two of our H1 series for the beginning of summer 2019. Uh, today we're going to cover this mysterious thing called fasting that, you know, is quite the buzzword lately. You hear a lot about fasting. And also we're going to jump into another important topic, and that is preparation and scheduling of your routines. Okay, so you might go, well, what does fasting and scheduling of routines of preparation have to do with each other? They have a lot to do with each other, actually. This is all going to come together with the H1 series, but I'm giving you bits and segments uh, with each one of them. So in this training video, we're going to start out by digging into this mysterious thing called fasting. Before we get too far into this, I've got to give you the little legal disclaimer right here. And that is the information we're going to cover today is the opinion of the author, myself, and our team here at Revitalize Life Fitness. And there's no way to be construed as medical advice. I'm not trying to re uh, replace being your doctor or any of that. So you understand I'm going to give you some solid facts and some science and some ideas and some opinions. And I encourage you to become a self-study with that. But I've got to tell you, you should always consult with your medical professional, your doctor, whoever it is that you, uh, you see routinely there, prior to beginning any exercise, self-help, dietary, or other life-altering type of programs. You assume all liability for your own actions of anything you take action on of anything we talk about here. I know this all makes you know sense, but it has to be said. And you agree to hold the author and the company harmless for any claims whatsoever if you take advantage of trying anything that, uh, you know, we talk about. Give you some ideas. And really what I'm coming to you here to do is to spark you to become your own self-study as well and figure out what works best for you. There are some things that have been proven time and time again. I mean, UCLA and all these beautiful big organizations that invest lots of money and time and research and effort, make some really great distinctions in some of the great physicians of the world and other practitioners, and we try to disseminate a good way to bring you some of these great ideas and bring it to you. So this is what we're after. You know, there is not a gospel. I'm going to give you some opinions and some things about fasting today. But exactly the way that I do it may not be exactly the right way that you do it. Or you may find you don't want to fast at all. I am a big proponent of fasting. Um, wish I could tell you I do it as regularly as I'd like to. So that's part of my commitment to this is going, okay, if I'm going to lead you, I need to be doing this myself. So welcome to today. Part one is going to be fasting. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the beauty of it. And you might say, this is kind of crazy, you know, is fasting good? Is, you know, you've been telling me normally, Coach Lou, that we're supposed to eat several times a day and don't skip breakfast and da 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 da. Correct. However, fasting has its place. There is a lot of good to it. We're going to cover that. The bad, fasting could be bad if you fasted and you didn't drink any water and you didn't, you know, and you did it for maybe 30 days and you didn't eat or drink anything. In that amount of time, that could probably be something really excessive that could damage your body or cause illness or death. There could be bad ways of doing it. The ugly, what might be ugly, is what comes out of your body the day after a fast when you go to the bathroom. That could be pretty ugly. And the beauty of fasting is the energy. The skin, what it does for your skin, your overall appearance and everything else, the day after a fast, you're going to go, hmm interesting. I feel like I look younger in a lot of cases. And there's some reasons to that. And we're going to dig into that. That's not just the hallucination going, oh, I look younger. Um, there are some scientific reasons why that may just be the case. So there's several different types of fasts you can do. Um, and there's many versions. There's the eat nothing for an extended period of time. Extended period of time could be 12 hours, could be 24 hours, could be two days, could be four days. Could, you know, some people are excessive; they do a month. You know, the, I'm I'm a, a big proponent personally of a 24-hour fast. That is usually what I'll do. Is either a 12 or a 24-hour fast. I really don't like to go too far beyond that because I'm very active, and I tend to peak and valley a lot during a fast. 
although I have done extended fasts and found the energy level kept on going up. But I still, you know, initially, if you're a new faster, stick to a 12 or 24 hour fast is what I believe is a good way to get started. Another type of fast is drinking only water for an extended period of time. And, you know, some people tell you, yep, that's a great fast and it works great for me. But I've always asked the question of what kind of water are you drinking? Is there anything in that water? Is it a good alkaline water? And please make sure it's not tap water. So that's another type of fast that people do. Um, there's a juice fast or a juice cleanse, they tend to be called, and that's where you drink raw vegetable juices for an extended period of time. Those can tend to be a little more sustainable for a few days um, than a, just a water fast. And it does allow your body, your digestive system to relax and a lot of stuff to cleanse out while still giving you some great nutrients. Now, it doesn't mean go to the store and buy Five Alive and say, I'm drinking that or orange juice and that's your juice fast. There's a lot to be said for green juices and making sure that's very alkaline, but we'll talk more about that. Um, there's an oil fast, which is good for the fact that the, uh, like the refined coconut oil, like the Bulletproof, and I'll put a link in here on the site for you where you can order it directly from Amazon, have it delivered to your door. I love to put it in my coffee as well, and it is part of my daily diet. Um, the cool thing about a coconut oil fast is the fasting, the good effects of fasting on your body are there. The mental fuel for your brain that takes from that coconut oil, the ketones, and it keeps you your, your very alert during your fast. So that is one that's a, a great one. There's a water and black coffee fast that tends to be a very cleansing fast. Um, that's one that uh, my doctor that I, I pass a lot of things along. He's one of my uh, health, you know, one of my health caregivers that I go to because he's very, very into nutritional healing, etc. But he is a doctor, so I've got that ability to say, okay, good. See, I live by my life. I tell you, I go run past things past my doctor. Uh, before doing some of these things to make sure that somebody who's got that degree, but the thing is all his postdoctorate work is in nutritional healing. So it's right up my alley. Not, you know, your average MD only has to take one nutrition course to actually, you know, graduate and get his license. And, you know, some, some people would say, well, in my form of medicine, you know, the dietary is not the, the focus, but in any form of healing in, in medical Dietary should be a huge part of it. Whether you're a brain surgeon, whether you're a cancer or you know doctor, or whether you're a uh, skin doctor or a vision doctor, nutrition is still the basis of it all. So I think that they, there needs to be a shift in the the medical education to you know get in there. Now I'm going to preface this with you know I always make the joke you know I, I, I love being out west driving up that Pacific Coast Highway and I've always said, hey, if I, you know, go over the side of that Pacific Coast Highway and you got to airlift me to a hospital, don't dump wheatgrass on my ass to make me better in that emergency room because I'm probably not going to make it. Do what you got to do to get my life sustained. Then give me all that healthy nutritional healing stuff to regenerate and grow and heal if that were to ever happen, God willing. I, you know, now I don't want to drive the Pacific Coast Highway after saying that, but you know what I mean. You know, trauma, emergency, medical has its place in saving lives and nutritional and healthy eating has its place in healing and prevention. It all fits together. It all works together. And there's no one way. You can't say one thing is all the Eastern medicine is the only way to go or the Western medicine is the only way to go or nutrition is the only way to go. Melding that in together and using each one of them when necessary is, is the way to go. But let me tell you, no matter what you got going on, if you eat and take care of your body and your body is at its healthiest it can be by what you're intaking, whatever comes at you that you might need that additional medical for if something happens, the stronger your body is if it has a medical challenge, the better your chances are of a faster recovery or, you know, we, let, let's face it, Whatever, when your body's operating the best, it's going to heal the best. That's where I'm going with this. So what are the benefits of fasting? In some cases, it stimulates weight loss. 
Um, it will, you know, gives your body a rest. It cuts down on the caloric intake for sure. Um, obvious, especially if somebody, you know, normally eats pancakes and potatoes for breakfast and a big old burger sandwich for lunch and some chips and stuff at, at snack time and, you know, three smoke lattes during the day and, you know, then sits down to a big old big ass steak and baked potato and mushy cooked vegetable and then a big old dessert afterwards. If somebody fasts for a day that's doing that, wow, what a difference that's going to make, eh? Right? Okay. So fasting could help with weight loss. Uh, weight loss. Cell apoptosis. And people are like, uh, hello, that means cell death. Yes, it stimulates cell death. However, your body tends to use and go after the weak cells, the mutated cells, first to eliminate those if your body goes in that starvation mode where it starts to... Uh, Catabolize, in other words, eat itself. It sounds that these sounds like these words sound like, oh my god, my body's eating itself. But it does. But it goes after those weaker and mutated cells first in a lot of cases. And there's a lot of research. Go do your research on this. This isn't a pipe dream of mine. But let's face it, if you got the opportunity to get rid of weak or mutated cells in the body, those are usually the sources of disease in a lot of cases. It allows your body to rest and heal. Digestion takes a lot of energy. So in the process of doing a fast, you will find that you know, your body, a lot of the body processes tend to keep going. What's really funny is, you know, you're like, I fasted all day yesterday. What's all this stuff coming out? Yeah, yeah, that tells you something. That tells a story. Detoxing. Fasting is great for detoxing. It tends to get you to let go of some of the heavy metals, some of the toxins, some of the pesticides and crap like that we're taking in. Let's face it, guys. We take in way too much chemical in the world we live in. So when, how often should you fast? What is intermittent, intermittent fasting that's the buzzword as opposed to extended fast? Intermittent fasting is something that you're seeing a lot of lately. And what I don't like seeing about it is there's a lot of uh, don't eat till noon. Now, it's okay if you get up at 11. Don't eat till noon. Do all your eating, you know, and, and, and eat a lot until 6 or 7. Then don't eat again till noon the next day. And not a big proponent of that on the, uh, on the side of your metabolism. That is not, as a trainer and a coach, I'm not a big proponent. Now, a lot of that has to do with what you're eating. But what the biggest problem I have with that is not that you're not eating for an extended period of time. It's that you're not firing off that metabolism in the morning. You're not giving your body nutrient in the morning. You're not giving something to go energy. So you, you might be somewhat forcing some fat energy, some fat burn there. But it's not really lighting the fire. I'd rather see you um, personally do what we call an extended fast. That's a 12, a 24, 36, whatever your number is, our fast. So taking a day of total fasting with just water, or, you know, doing the oil fasting where, you know, I have a couple packets of that oil to stay sharp here. Because let's face it, I keep going. What will you expect on a day like that? You'll expect in the morning, you'll, you'll tool along, you should be good, you should be good. Um, maybe midday you get a little low. And then all of a sudden you get this burst of energy again and clarity. And you're like, hey, hey this is pretty cool. And the hunger goes away. And then the you know, longer you're away from that, and especially when you're getting stuff done, I don't recommend heavy, heavy exercise that day, like super lifting or super long runs, but I also don't recommend sitting on your butt. Um, you'll find that if you stay active, mildly active, but very mentally active and focused and task-oriented, that that stuff gets easier. It's like, oh, your brain lights up, especially doing an oil fast. You're like, hey, this is cool. I can focus, you get a lot done. And you don't spend a lot of time eating, and the thing you don't have is that up and down sugar crash. 
you might hit a couple lulls here and there and a couple little peaks and valleys, but nothing like that sugar crash where you're like craving that schmoke latte in the, in the afternoon because you got to get some sugar and caffeine down. Not against coffee. You guys know my rule on that. Organic, mycotoxin-free coffee, whichever brand you want to use is great with me. That's important. You can do a black coffee fast along with the oil fast where you have a little bit of coffee during the day with that oil, and my God, it won't break your, your fast, the physical fast, and you'll find you have excellent mental, mental clarity. I should have fasted today. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. So anyway, on that note, uh, fasting, is it for you? Probably. Check with your doctor, make sure they're okay with it, you know, and everybody's got their opinion about how, when, what type. Experiment with it a little bit, figure out what works for you. What works for me is the extended fast, a 12 or a 24. Usually that's all I do is a 24. I try to fast for days and days and days. Some people that works great for. Um, but I like to do that because it gets everything cleared out. Now you may experience some ups and downs of energy during the day. In the evening, the night that you fast, you might experience some um, different sleep patterns. Some people sleep way better, way deeper. Some people, it's a little sketchy. Some people have some kind of crazy dreams and sweat and, you know, some toxins and stuff are coming out. But then the next morning you wake up and you do feel like, wow. So if you're really toxic, First few times you fast, you know, that night or the next day, you might have some weird feelings. But, you know, it's worth it to get the garbage out, get the healthy stuff in, and experiment with it. Try some juice fast, some juice cleanses, do, do the oil, do the oil coffee, do the just water. See what works best for you, and it might be tough at first. So the option is whatever option you choose for that day, that is your only option. You don't go, well, we have one cookie just to get me through the day. You know, you're going to screw it up. You're going to throw that sugar in the mix. Or, you know, I'll do it for, you know, from until lunchtime, and then I'll, I'll, I'll do it next week. No, if you commit to a day of fasting, do it. Follow through and do it. The rewards are endless. It's amazing. But fasting can be very amazing for people. Again, check with your doctor. Make sure there's not a reason. I mean, I'm talking to a, a worldwide audience out here. You know, you may be diabetic or something like that where that might not work for you, but there might be a version of it that your doctor can say, well, if you do this, you'll get the benefits of it, but we got to do this to keep you safe. And that's why I say what I say that, you know, make sure that you're making informed choices when you're doing this. But by all means, do something. You know, as long as there's nothing, there's no danger, give it a try. Try fasting. Do it once a week. I like to do it once a week. One one day a week of fasting is amazing. Especially if you have a day where you ate kind of crappy the day before. You fast, and all of a sudden you go, wow, this is what it feels like not to have that garbage in my body. Okay, so on fasting, I think it's an amazing concept. I'm not a huge fan of the intermittent fasting, which is weird because it's weird they call it that. That's almost a daily fasting where you don't eat until noon or later and you, you box your food into one little area of the day. And I'm not a big fan of that. That doesn't work best for me. It does work good for some people. So make your decisions there, your choices as to what works. Now we're going to shift gears and we're going to talk into some preparation and scheduling of your routines. Now, how does this have anything to do with fasting? Well, you're going to have to schedule that fasting in because you'll never do it if you say, well, I'm going to fast once a week. What? What day? When? I'm going to work out three times a week. Where is it? Is it on your calendar? Is it? Do you have it marked on your calendar? Work out with me or work out with you or work out with your trainer. Do you have it scheduled? It's got to be scheduled, guys. That is the whole key to it. See, forming a habit, I'm going to use an example here. Any of you pick up your kids from school or pick responsible for picking somebody else up or a pet or something you're responsible for that really would be seriously frowned upon if you just out of the blue forgot. 
I'm going to talk to you. Most of you are parents or grandparents or whatever. So you got to pick the kids up 3 o'clock every day at school. At 3.05, if you're not there, the teachers are going, hey, uh, we're out of here. What are we going to do with this kid? Have you ever been stuck in traffic or behind a stupid train or there was an accident and you were late and you called and said, hey, I'm on my way. Okay. Yep, great. Things are wonderful. Have you ever just left your child there and said, I'll, I'll get to him tomorrow? Oh, I don't think that would go over real well with anybody, and nor do I think you would do that. Just, you know, ah, I'll pick my kid up tomorrow, let him sleep at school. But that's how people treat their exercise, getting their business stuff done, getting some personal stuff done that's important, taking care of their bodies, eating good. You know, it's, I'll get to it when I get to it. You know, I'll start tomorrow or this, that, or the other. No, 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 no. If you want something to become a habit, and you want a routine, you've got to schedule it and follow through with it, the same as you would picking your kids up from school at the time they're supposed to be picked up, notwithstanding some bumps and bruises here and there. But still, you don't just say, I'll get to it tomorrow. Hopefully not. Uh, if you're that kind of person, I, I might be talking to you, and it's a miracle you're on this, this type of broadcast if you would just not care about your kid or whatever and not pick them up till tomorrow because, yeah, you're that irresponsible. You're not that person who's on here. You're that person going, how do I make this all work? How do I get better? How do I grow? How do I learn? How do I make things better? So getting them better is to commit and schedule. So when you're creating these routines or habits, should we call them, a habit is a single thing, a routine is a set of habits. So that's, I, mean, I use the words interchangeably once in a while, but kind of view it that way. A uh, habit is a single item that's part of a routine that's multiple items. So if we can agree on that, we're good. So all of those have to have a strong why. Why do you want the outcome? See, each little habit, you can say, well, I want to work out each day. Because you should. Because mom said you should. Apropos for Mother's Day. Uh, or your doctor said you should, or you should do it, or you would like to look better. No, you got to have a strong why. Why? Well, I'm going to work out three times a week because uh, I need to be here to watch my grandkids grow up, or my kids grow up, or you know my health is failing. It's got to be compelling. Either the push of the pain or the draw of the uh, pleasure. You guys know the drill. If you don't know what I'm talking about on that, you need to go rewind yourself back into the other video series and watch so that we've got everything covered. So you know some of the terminology I'm using. I hope you've been with me since day one on these videos. The cool thing is you can catch them all replayed in lives of the lives and all the trainings on the site revitalizelife.com on our blog. So it's all there. If you're just tuning into this and this is your very first one, stop, go back to number one. And, and just run through it, run through it. It's like a course. It's like an edu a whole education in motivation and healthy habits. And, you know, this month we're focusing on the health side of it, but we focus on a lot of different aspects of life. So what we're going to talk about right here is going to work on a lot of different aspects of life. So creating that strong why. Why do I want this outcome? Why am I going to do each one of these habits? Because when I put the habit and this habit and this habit together into this routine, that builds into me getting my outcome. And my outcome is something that is strongly why-based. Why do I want that outcome? I want to make a million bucks. What? Because I want to have see a, you know, a bank statement that says a million bucks? Or do you have a mission, something that drives you? I want to do this for charity, or I want to do this for my family, or I want to take this vacation, or I want this beautiful home because I work hard. You know, your, your compelling reason why is yours. You know, I would hope that it's growth and contribution based, that, you know, your why, if you want a big goal, is something that's grander and better than just yourself. But that's, that's a whole different discussion. So powerful why. Whatever your why is, make it powerful. Here's your steps to creating your habit and or routines. Decide on that outcome. Know what it is. Take it in your heart. Know it. Write it down. So number one is decide. Number two is write it down. Write a plan for its achievement. This plan for its achievement has to be specific, 
daily, weekly, monthly, and or yearly actions that must take place. I want to, you know, okay, my outcome is to lose 50 pounds, and to do that, I have to do X amount of workouts and eat this way for X amount of time. You got to break that down to what do I need to do daily and then do it. You can't say, well, I need to do this monthly only and then not know what you're going to do each and every day. So daily, weekly, monthly, yearly actions, put them down, schedule them, get them on your schedule the same way. If it's going to the gym to get fit, if it's meal prep, if it's time with your children, if it's a massage to take care of your body, whatever it is, get it scheduled, planned, written down, and stick to it. And stuff comes up. Once in a while we get derailed, we get right back on course. But are you with me on that? Once you schedule it, you're good. Get up a little earlier in the morning. And I know you're already going, Jesus, I get up at 5 in the morning. Great, get up at 445. There's a, a magic to that anyway, because nobody else is up in a perfect world. And maybe there are some other people up in that time frame in your household. Maybe not. Get up 15 minutes earlier than you do. Take that time to write down your goal for the day, why you want it, and the action items that are going to get you there. Now, not a, just a to-do list. You hear back up. Your goal for the day, what it is you really want out of the day, you don't want to do your to-do list. There's a reason you make a to-do list. So back it up. You're going to go for your goal, what you want to do. You're going to go for your um, why am I doing it? Your reason. You want it compelling. You want to feel great about it. Then you can put down your action items. Cool thing with your action items, these differ than the habits that you schedule routinely because your action items, sometimes you get your goal quicker and you don't have to do them all. Because some of them aren't things that are really productive but normally would have to occur. But sometimes you get something out of the way and you go, wow, that, that took two or three of the action items right there. That's great. So this way you get the sufficient time in the morning. 15 minutes is all it takes to do this. I'm not asking you to get up two, three hours early to do this. Maybe initially it takes a half hour. 15 minutes in the morning to do this. The other thing is, even after you get it down to where maybe you can knock that out in five minutes, that 15 minutes is great because starting your day rushed and stressed out is going to create forgetfulness. You're going to forget things. You're going to be in a bad mood, you're going to be in a hurry, and if something happens like the train gates go down, your day is all thrown up, you know what, it's better to be going, okay, oh great, the train's there, oh, it's okay, <laughs> five minutes early anyway, so now I'm still on time, so give yourself sufficient time in the morning, that's a great thing. So number four, upon creating this written agenda for your day, your habits, immediately set up the plan and immediately take action on your first one. Don't wait. Don't write out this great plan and say, I'll start tomorrow. If you wait, your chances of follow through go down by 85 to 90 percent within that one day. So just do it. You come up with a great idea. You come up with a great plan. Get something in order. You say, well, my plan might just be to you know, get up that 15 minutes extra early and uh, have coffee and, you know, have that time to plan my day. And that, well, how about take action on it tonight? Get the dang coffee pot ready tonight. Have your coffee out, your coffee cup out. Have your spoon out. Your breakfast, your nice healthy breakfast is ready to go and fast. Your bag is packed for work or school right by the door. Um, you just took action to make the morning smoother. And that's the whole thing. The whole thing with this and the planning and that is to make life go smoother so you're more productive. It's just pretty much that easy. So 85 to 90% failure rate if you don't take immediate action, that's pretty bad. That's, that's almost making sure you lose. So take immediate action when you create this plan. Fifth thing is find out which habits and routines are giving you the most results. Do this over a 30-day period. It isn't, oh, this didn't work this week and da-da-da-da. And those become level one priorities. Those are the things that when shit hits the fan and you know, you might have to cut some things down, you know, time frame, somebody in the family's ill, you got something going on that's gonna eat up some extra time, these things still get done because if you don't do them, they're gonna derail you. 
the other habits that aren't as effective are the secondary habits, the kind of things that you might go, all right, well, in the grand scheme of things, this one matters just a tiny bit. This one over here matters a lot. So this one, because we're in a position today, something went sideways, I have extra work. You've got those secondary ones that could be eliminated or combined in with the others. Say today is leg day at the gym, um, but you're like, oh God, you know, I, I, I know I need to get my workout in, but I've you know, got to be into work early and I really wanted to do you know, cardio also. So what if you did your leg exercises at an intensity that also raised your heart rate to the same level that your cardio would have, and you're doing them both parallel together? Oh, yeah, that works. You're still getting your result, but you're not spending the extra time, you know, in the event that happens. So six, notice what your new habits are giving you and build upon them. You know, if you have a new habit of getting up 15 minutes earlier and doing this planning and so forth, next thing you know, you go, hey, I got this new course I want to take and, you know, I have no time. You know what, I'll get up even 15 minutes earlier and I'll knock out 15 minutes of the course every day. How cool would you feel then if your day was planned, you got to do something great for yourself and grow, and then you start your day. And nobody's the wiser but you. You're going, hey, I'm doing this. This is awesome. So, seven, make sure that when you set a, ha a habit in motion, stick to it. You set the habit in motion and, you know, you want to make sure that you don't try it once and go, okay, well, this didn't really work. So the habit, you set each habit in motion, becomes a routine. Initially, it's going to be work until it becomes a routine magic number there is about 30 days. Once you're doing a habit and a routine for 30 days, it tends to really sink in and just becomes part of you. Or you find out that there may be parts of that that don't work so well and you learn something that works even better in the process, so you switch swap a little bit. You know, it's not set in gold, or gold, yeah, I mean, it can be gold, not set in stone. What it is, is set up so you're going to win. So give each habit that you put in motion 30 days to really do it and stick with it before you make any decisions on changing, altering, adding to, and see what you learn from it. You know, some, some habits are, are not gonna be productive. Some things you're gonna say, well, I've been doing this and I committed to doing it, but this part of it's not working, but this part's working great. So shift the focus over to the part that works better and less focus on the part that, that isn't working so well. Make sense? Okay. Very important. Like I said before, you've got to schedule those habits. When you think of them, schedule them right then and there. Have a piece of paper, a pad of paper, your note thing open on your phone because if you think, oh, good idea, I'll, I'll have to follow up on that later, 15 minutes later, you won't have a clue what, what, what that great idea was. That could have been a multi-million dollar idea, a life-altering, life-changing, life-saving idea, and it flitted on you. Or it got murked. You had it exactly set up. I do this with acronyms all the time. I'll be like, oh, that is cool. Let me, I'll write it down when I get, you know, get in. What I really need to do is hit the, hey, Siri, write a note for me. Funny. What do you want to say? <laughs> Thanks, Siri. Um, that is just funny, but it just okay. shows. I created a note. Thanks, Siri. <laughs> it just goes to show how easy it is to actually follow through with it. Now we have a note on there. I'm going to look at it and go, "Thanks, Siri." Oh, she's proud of herself. But you see how easy it really is. You don't have to stop everything to capture, if that makes sense. Capture the idea, capture it, get it scheduled. You know, hey Siri, put a reminder on my schedule for tomorrow at noon, I have an appointment. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. All right, we're gonna shut her up a little bit. 
But that's funny. See, it's just that easy, guys. These are the types of things that's not difficult to do. So my hope and prayer for you today is that you really, truly do follow through with stuff. And to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day, because this is being recorded on Mother's Day. So I'm going to get my butt home and go celebrate. But, you know, my, my thing is, is I want to deliver this to you. So I have to do this through here as us at the studio and get it in for you. All right, so here it is. Are you ready? We got the rules. Your habits got to be written out. You got to write them down initially. They got to be scheduled. You must have a powerful why and they must be measurable. You want more rules? Most people don't. That's it. Those are your rules to them. And you got to do them. You got to follow through. You've got to follow through. Schedule it the same as you do picking your kids up from school or anything else that would be ultra life altering if you did not do it each day. Um, if you don't have kids, think of breathing. You know, uh, I'm not going to breathe until 3 o'clock. I'm going to put that off. It might not be a good idea. You turn purple and not be here by 3 o'clock. So sometimes, and I heard Les Brown put this, want it as much as you want to breathe and you'll get it. Well, that's the same deal here. Put it, put it down, your habits. Um, want them as much as you want to breathe. Want them as much as you want to protect your children, your loved ones, and do it for a purpose. It's the whole key to this. This is easy stuff. So we reviewed a lot of really cool stuff today. Absolutely excited to spend the time with you. Uh, check out the live video replay up above in case you haven't seen it. And we're going to rock, guys. This is going to be an amazing six-week journey into H1. Uh, next week, I will probably be going live uh, somewhere um, in Pennsylvania or Western New York because of the race. So we're going to cover some really cool stuff next week. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for spending some time with me. Hopefully this has shed some light on that mysterious fasting thing and given you the opportunity to learn how to schedule in your habits so that you can begin to really accelerate where you're going. So remember, habits are pieces of routines. You put the habit, you install it, you install it, you install it, it becomes a routine that makes your life better, ultimately. And if it's not, change your habits and routines. And it helps you to grow, contribute, and be stronger at everything you do. Have an awesome day. We'll see you on the next uh, live. We'll see you on the live. We'll see you on the next training video. This is Coach Lou sending love to everybody. Happy Mother's Day. And live with energy, passion, and always live your dreams. Thank you.